So, uh, good afternoon um, everyone. My name is uh, Barry Treves, I'm an NEC consultant and I'm here today to, um, on this webinar to, on the public sector procurement, Crown Commercial Service and NEC3 for suppliers to uh, the public sector. And I'm joined on the panel today by... Danielle Carvel, I'm Category Manager for Traffic Management Technology, working for Crown Commercial Service. Good, so welcome everyone and um, say um, Danielle and myself now are going to um, give you a, an overview of the NEC contracts uh, and how they relate to effectively the traffic management technology to yeah um, so it's a mouthful isn't mouthful, it mouthful, it's a mouthful, <laughs> I had to think about it don't know, <laughs> yeah so um, we're going to have a check out so the objectives really are today is to um, give people a, an overview an introduction to the NEC mm -hmm. Um, family of contracts to understand the philosophy and yep. the objectives of using the NEC uh, contracts and also in, especially in relation to the, the framework agreement to yep. actually understand how the different NEC contracts might be used yep. in those particular different circumstances yep. um, under the contract. I think that's really important because although most of my suppliers have used NEC 3 in the past um, there are some that perhaps haven't or haven't used the full suite of them. Right. So there's a, a feeling of a little uncertainty there. So the next hour or so I'm sure will be a yep. good use of time for us all. Good. Okay, thank you. So so what is the NEC contract? So the NEC contract now is just it's just an acronym basically. So it's now effectively a product name for a whole series of family of modern day contracts, all built on the same idea, which is about better management of projects. Mm. It doesn't really matter whether you're, you know, you're building something, or you're maintaining something, or you want a professional service. Then, effectively, the idea we can have some common principles in terms of good mm -hmm. project management on all those projects. So, the very much the emphasis is about better management mm -hmm. of that. And again, like all contracts, it always defines a legal relationship between um, the parties. Mm -hmm. um, but I suppose what differentiates NEC from other contracts? If you look at the kind of characteristics that are, are there. So we've got this standard family, family of contracts, so yeah. it differs a lot from other forms where you find that there are pockets of, of contracts that don't tend to cover the full mm -hmm. spectrum. So here, and you see as we'll see, the idea that you can cover the full spectrum, so whatever you want to procure effectively, um, whether of high value, low value, complexity, any type of work, the NEC family will cover that scenario uh, for you. Stimulates good management, so the NEC has been designed, carefully written, to encourage collaboration yeah. and stimulate good management between the parties. Mm -hmm. And there are sanctions for not doing things as well. So the, the contract's very much about action yeah. and doing things. Yeah. That's what it needs to do. That's one of its core features mm -hmm. and things that it needs to do. It can be used in a wide variety of commercial situations yeah. uh, for a variety of types of different types of uh, work and any location. Yeah. So it's got a great, you know, great deal of flexibility. In that Which is point. very handy because the scope of traffic management technology is, is huge. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, I think I said to you earlier that, you know, when I saw the pin note, I don't think I've seen a <laughs> big pin notice <laughs> for, one, <laughs> for one framework agreement all my life. Yeah. Anyway, so there, there seems to be things I've never even heard of in terms of traffic management technology anyway, but it's very comprehensive. It's I can say that. Indeed. I think it's definitely comprehensive. And we've got a clear and simple uh, document. Uh, using language and structure which are straightforward and easily mm -hmm. understood, that's the objective. You know, we're trying to make contracts something that's there, there to be used. Yeah. Um, and that's effectively that one of the principles behind NEC is trying to make sure that we actually have something that's used. It's not something, as you said before, we don't you know, throw it into a box. Yeah, or... yeah, I heard that analogy is that a contract is, is signed and shoved in the bottom drawer. Yeah. My understanding of, of how NEC um, collaborates is by getting both parties or um, yeah. to the contract to actually work together, start with the end in, in mind and get to that point by working together. Yeah. Absolutely, that, I mean, that's, you know, that's, a key, that's a key thing that NEC is definitely trying mm. to do. So look at the flexibility, multidisciplinary, uh, responsibility for design by either party, yeah. uh, choice of pricing mechanisms from lump sum, so a fixed yeah. price lump sum where the suppliers are taking the risk really to fully, being fully cost reimbursable where yeah. effectively the employers it's taking taking the most of the risks, sure. you know, really. But again, on that at the end of the spectrum, it is because the employer or doesn't the buyer doesn't know quite what he wants yeah, at that sure. point. Yeah. So we've got that mix between the two in the middle ground. We've got target cost uh, contracts, 
Uh, and we can also have, we have a, a series of what we call secondary options NEC as well. Mm. So we have a commonality of core clauses, we choose a main option, we then have a series of secondary options yeah. depending on where we want the risk to lie between the parties. Okay. So that's the way that the NEC contracts are built up to build up this kind of um, suite of mm -hmm. uh, risks and allocation of risk sure. between the parties. Um, and again, as we say, you know, I get it. as you know already, Daniel, I call it, I jokingly call it the martini of contracts. I like that. Shaken, not stared, I, I think, like you know, that. however you like your martini, <laughs> you can have it. You can have it you like, like, with or without the honest. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, but that, I think that just shows that is the flexibility yeah, of the contract sure. is, is a wide range of different ways that it can be used by mm -hmm. buyers to procure things from. Yeah. from the supply chain and it can be used for international use as well mm -hmm. so there's some uses internationally yeah um you know if you go to um, hong kong hong kong we've got actually NEC mad as well so if you supply if you supply to hong kong or the far east mm -hmm. there's certainly the government bodies out there have all gone nec yeah. south africa a bit of use in new zealand australia and other parts of the world mm -hmm. as well so i think there's some statistics like there's 39 countries around the world that actually use mm -hmm. NEC no, contracts. i saw a bit on um i think it was the nec website but it might have been a, a uh, email like a news email where NEC were um, a Hong Kong conference of yes. some description. So there's there's a big presence yeah. around the world. Yes, um, and they were used um, NEC three being they were used at the Olympics, the London Olympics as well, weren't they? It was. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. To to yeah. get the job done. Yeah. So so John Armit, who's you know, president was president of the ICE, you know, effectively you know, did claim that the, the real hero of the Olympics was the NEC3 former contract. I still think that's controversial, <laughs> Barry, okay. Yeah, I think the athletes did a good yeah. job as well, actually, I think. There we are, but there we are. So may, maybe this is the right athlete. Maybe the NEC is the right athlete for your contract, maybe. perhaps, for, for CCS, perhaps. Um, so again, looking at the characteristics, clarity and simplicity. Again, what NEC uh, has been designed over the years, since it was first published, is the idea to use ordinary language. Let's, yeah. let's get away from legalese and all that type of stuff that goes on in the to try and minimal use of legalese and the contracts uh, and trying to get away from phrases like fair, reasonable in the opinion of mm. um, NEC likes to be uh, have uh, the objective yeah. and have objective tests in the contract mm. about things, have reasons why things are done yeah. as well so it's trying to in, you know, encourage good communication uh, I guess in the idea that if we do that, if we give reasons clearly communicate and mm. obviously we've got a better understanding of what it is we're trying to do. Sure, yeah. And hopefully we can mitigate the risks, etc. It goes back to that collaboration word yeah. again, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, it goes back to that um, and then conversation. And then and you see, uh, you know, it's got you've got reasons for decisions yeah. to be stated, yeah. you're very user friendly structure. And again, I suppose, I mean one of the things of NEC is one of the, you know, I guess the initial challenges is to find your way around the NEC contracts. There are no, there is no cross referencing like other contracts. Yeah. So a tip, a top tip would be, be, you know, if you get the standard contract, yeah. go to the index, have a look, yeah. look for things like early warnings or program, yeah. and that then will take you to the relevant clauses. So yeah. it's a good way to try and help you in the early stages of having a contract yeah. if you need to navigate look at the processes, yeah, yeah, to navigate yeah. yourself around. Good tip, thank yeah. you. Um, in terms of characteristics, so the, by far the most important thing is always about, this is really about the stimulus good management. Yeah. This is what really NEC is all driving to to do. And effectively, when you look at traditional contracts, I suppose this is the difference on traditional contracts, um, you know, you could exaggerate by saying, you know, the, the, the employer's view of life doesn't really change. Yes. Whereas, you yeah. know, your, your suppliers, yes. forgive, you, forgive me, suppliers, yeah. you know, maybe you go on uh, fishing trips, you know, you're saying it's a number up here. Yeah. So really, all NEC is trying to do in very simple terms is to say, wouldn't it be a weird, actually, if, Danielle, you were the client, I'm, I'm the supplier, mm -hmm. If we were to agree changes as we go along yeah. to a time scale, wouldn't that be a good idea that actually incrementally mm. we've got a greater certainty outcome because we know, because your worry will be you don't know what you're going to pay. Yeah. You're worried I keep telling you it's lots of money. Yeah. As a, for a contractor, your concern is you don't know how much money you're going to get paid. Yeah, you sure. just keep saying no. Yeah. So again, that's the thing about NEC, it's trying to, but it is demanding and it does require investment and resources to do that, mm -hmm. to try and keep on top of that, that incrementally we can get a great certainty of outcome if yeah. we can agree and sort of changes out yeah, under the sense. contract. So that's a key thing that yeah. we're looking to do here, which is good for both, you know, yeah. for, for both parties to the contract. Uh, and again, the idea that every procedure in there is designed to contribute rather than detract yeah. away from the effectiveness of the contract for both parties. And again, this idea that foresight applied collaboratively, mm -hmm. you know, 
shrinks risk, uh, shrinks risk and mitigates problems effectively. Yeah. And also we've got a clear division of function yeah. and responsibility. And the core, you know, the core, the core process that we've got again there is risk management, which is all about early warnings. Yeah. You know, so if either of us see a problem, we tell yeah. each other yeah. as early as we can, yeah. and then we can do something about it. And we'll have a discussion. So we'll yeah. discuss that there might be several ways of dealing with that risk or that issue that's come up. We want a regularly updated program, especially for the, um, for the construction contracts or a plan for the term services contract. And again, that's a way of understanding, are we on program, are we yeah. on track? And again, you can see how NEC lends itself really to good project management, because without a plan or a program, how do you know where you're going? How do you make informed decisions yeah. about a change that you wish to make mm -hmm. um, or something that's happened? So, you know, they're important that those elements are kept going and again communication making sure that we properly communicate with each other yeah, exactly. encourages us to communicate um, hopefully for all good reasons of trying to make sure we get a greater certainty of outcome on the contract so if we look at the NEC family of uh, contracts that are available um, if we can start so we've just got an example here there's many different mm. examples of a life cycle for, a, for yeah. any type of project yeah. business case design construction operation in its simplest sense and then if we look at that, we could have projects which are of high complexity yeah. or low complexity. Yeah. I guess we could also say, you know, high risk, low risk, yeah. number of stakeholders, that very simple idea. And when we start to look at the NEC, so if we look at this as being the, the backdrop of the, um, the stages and the phases of our project life cycle. So if we look at the professional services contract, so we have a professional services contract. Um, that we can see here. So if you just want to do some feasibility studies up front, that you can engage a supplier to do feasibility studies. Yeah. If you want them to do some design for something for yeah. you, you could engage them to do, do some design. Right. Yeah. During the construction phase, maybe a, you know, a, a supplier or a contractor might engage a supplier to effectively do some design work. So you could use a professional services contract for that. Mm -hmm. Or during the operation stage, maybe there's need to do a review to look at maybe why a piece of equipment or some goods have got problems or whatever. So there sure. might be a need a technical review or something like yeah. that. Uh, and what we find with NEC has this uh, idea that you know you'd use uh, effectively uh, the full-blown professional services contract with all its clauses and all the stimulus to good management. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about, yeah. uh, and the sophisticated management tools that you've got built in to the professional services contract, uh, as all the main contracts have. That also you have a situation where we could have a short contract, okay. and so the idea of a short contract being that you know effectively it's low risk. Mm -hmm. Um, and it doesn't require, so the project doesn't require sophisticated management yeah. uh, tools because it's something that's very simple. Yeah. Uh, in there. So again, if you take the professional services contract, we've got very clear and detailed rules mm -hmm. on section three about the program. Yeah. When you go to the short contract, mm -hmm. it's just really a couple of lines that say, well, the program is whatever you say it is within the scope. Yeah. Okay. So you can see, you can either have all the full blown yeah. management requirements or on the short contracts it's more simple yeah you know and again i guess you're looking at simple more simple straightforward sure. so yeah so this is a theme that we're going to find right through the whole family of contracts when we look at um, and you see how it works um, so a similar thing we've got our ecc contract engineering construction contract mm -hmm. so again if we want to create an asset we want to build an asset we want to install an asset that's where we're looking at that in terms yeah. of an ecc engineering construction uh, contract and then to, to build the family, yeah, if, you, if you are a supplier, you could engage. So if you are a contractor, you could engage a subcontractor yeah. on engineering construction subcontract. Mm -hmm. And again, the beauty of that is exactly the same structure and format. So the nice thing about this, doing this is, once we've talked through this, you can apply the same principles yeah. to all the family of the contracts. Well, it gives consistency and it Absolutely. And that, that nicely, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, and I guess that's maybe, you know, I think uh, you know, that, might, that might be one of the things that you're looking for, I guess, out of your framework is to have that consistency. Well, I, think, I think consistency is something everybody wants. Um, yeah. So, uh, so no, that, that fits. So we've got a subcontract. Then we've got a short contract. So a short contract, again, this idea, if you just want to um, create you know, a, something simple, you just want an extra traffic light or an extra small piece of work, then, mm. you know, just have it, you can just have a short, very simple yeah. contract. Yeah. You're not heavily reliant on lots of stakeholders, lots of interfaces, mm. or it's not lots of risk. Why not use a you know why not use a short, short version of a it? A short version. Keep life of it. simple. Keep life simple. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, and then you can also have a short subcontract. So again, we can see if uh, a 
supplier enters into a short contract, he could also have a short subcontract as well. So yeah. Again, very simple. Keeps everything back to back. Mm -hmm. Again, but all the contracts have the same principles in terms of good management principles within them. Just for the level. It's a bit like, I'm going to show you, it's a bit like the old days when you used to have the graphic equaliser on your stereo system. No, you don't. You're too, young, <laughs> you're too young to remember. But you used to be able to, you used to have these carefully recorded, you know, recordings on your on your records. Yeah. And then you could have it on the graphic equaliser, you could play around with the treble and bass and all that kind of stuff. Okay. You could distort this. If you liked a bit more bass, you could have a bit more bass or a bit more treble, whatever you like. So, But again, that's what you can do with the NC. It's got that flexibility to be able to do that. Then we've got a term services contract, so if you want to maintain an asset really, so again, I suppose typically, you know, maintaining the, the street lighting for part of the network or something like that, perhaps, um, you'd have that to, to maintain that in a steady state. Um, the term services contract does the, have the ability for you to do very small parcels of work, mm -hmm. uh, maybe by what we call a task order. So you could have a task order where you can do a little bit of, you know, you might need to have some more, uh, Kind of um, security cameras or something like that, yeah. Yeah. or traffic cameras, for instance. That you could, you know, you've got a network of a thousand, but you want to buy another five. Yeah. And you need to have them, you know, installed, etc. You can do that. So, but the predominant base of it is that it's a service. Okay. You know, they're maintaining the asset over a period of time yeah. for you. Yeah. It's not, it's not building it. If you want to build something, that's where you need to look at using a new construction contract. Sure. Yeah. So, kind so of that's where our um, earlier conversation around one of the customers who are looking to. Um, buy electric vehicle charge points oh, and then right, the yeah. service and maintenance fits in yeah. um, because um, I understand that the, the engineering contract will be used for the, the installation of yes. the charge points and the term service contract would be say five years yeah, for the maintenance and the, the back office side yeah. of things so for them it's a bit of a blend there. Yeah. And again, like everything, so wherever it's we've got, got a short yeah, we've got a short version. There's always a short <laughs> oh, version. Getting, getting the hang of this yeah, now. getting the hang of it now. There's always a short version there. Um, we have a framework. So NEC has a framework contract. So again, this is I guess um, your suppliers will be familiar with the fact that you've got your framework yeah. agreement, and under that framework agreement, there are a number of the NEC contracts that you can use that yeah. hang off that. Yeah, so it's your yeah. version of yeah, our yeah. framework agreement. Yeah, so, so you've yeah. got that, and so in the framework agreement, no, no doubt, there's, there are rules about. Effectively, further competition, yeah. direct, direct award, direct award, etc. Et yeah. That you've got in there. So, yeah. yeah. But essentially, if you're on the frame, you know the buyers on the frame will have the freedom then to look at what is the most appropriate form of contract yes. for whatever they want exactly. to buy off the off the list. Basically. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So there's um, a copy of the framework agreement, i.e., your version of the framework yeah. contract, on the traffic management technology two web page, right. so customers can see that. And there's guidance for customers as well, buyers, if you want to use yeah. that expression, as well as to what to consider. Do you do fair competition? Do you get direct award? Um, and in the, just so suppliers are aware on the on the webinar yeah. here, in the previous session, um, we sort of highlighted that customers are not on their own if they want to chat through which type of contract to use, get in contact with us, basically. Yeah, good. I think the other, I think the other interesting point that came out from um, previous um, session was as well obviously that obviously your encouragement to buy to speak to the suppliers yes about what's available <laughs> collaboration collaboration yeah. collaboration think, if, yeah. if you have a hunch yeah. um as a customer if you have a hunch that a supplier can provide something particularly on a catalog have a word yes ask the question don't don't, don't just, just ignore it and go away yeah, yeah. Don't just don't assume yeah. yeah so again coming back to the nec family we have an adjudicators uh, contract so again that was introduced so that's the first point of if there is a dispute between the parties of the idea um, when it was first introduced you know, the idea that you have a quick and dirty decision very quickly from yeah. an adjudicator within four weeks and you just move it really moves on. Move on so yeah. i mean hopefully we can try and resolve things ourselves under the contracts anyway sure. if, if things crop up yeah. but you know, um, it's good to have that. a backstop isn't it good to have a backstop yeah, if you just do, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. and then we've got the supply contracts as well so again we've got a supply contract and a short supply contract so we want a piece of um, yes, you know, equipment provided, you mm. know, traffic signals, uh, lighting columns, whatever it might be, yeah. um, traffic management systems, then obviously you can uh, you can actually uh, have a supply contract yeah. as well, which is dedicated to the idea. So um, the supply contract really is about high value, buying high value pieces of equipment effectively. Mm -hmm. And again, like everything else, having the short yeah. 
supply contracts about having something simpler, just maybe one or two units or something. Yeah, yeah. But you don't need all the sophisticated management and delivery times, all that type of thing. So yeah, sure. we can see we've got a very full picture there in terms of, and you can see from this, as I say, the idea that it's a martini contract because it does cover the whole spectrum. Yes. But you can see there's no gaps here. Yes. And remember, you can have any level of design responsibility mm -hmm. as well. So you can see that it covers, you know, pretty well covers the whole spectrum of the the buying and procurement marketplace out yeah, there as definitely. well. Um, and actually, yeah, so again, you know, so that's the, you know, that's the NEC um, characteristics of the NEC, the things yeah. it's trying to do. And yeah, so and I guess how does it, it, it align with your... How does it work with kind of commercial service? We're sort of going back, just alluding to the previous slide around um, supply short contract. Majority of my suppliers will be fully aware of that um, because um, it's mandated for use of the catalogue. So right. they add um, to, to the catalogue platform, as it were, or marketplace, as you may yeah. wish to call it, um, uh, an overview as to what the product strict service is um, and the supply short contract details, the finer detail um, as to what it comes with, any warranties, do they need access um, to a particular um, place of work, for example, yeah. Yeah. when will delivery <clears throat> take place? Um, and it's important to stress as well that um, the supply short contract can include commoditized services right. as well as goods. Right, yeah. Um, so you've expanded the use a little bit from a yes, traditional NEC. Contract. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, so my agreement, as with all of the Crown Commercial Service Agreements, can be used by all of the public sector. So we're talking everything from central government, Highways England. Um, Department for Transport, etc., through to local authorities. So there's a huge, huge scope there. Um, with regards to how NEC um, fits in, is that is that C word again? It's collaboration. Yeah. Um, getting some consistency there and encouraging efficiencies, um, both for the customers but also for the suppliers, and encouraging this pre-market engagement, having the conversation uh, from the customer's point of view. What do you want to achieve? Okay suppliers come in and talk about it yeah. and that's the sense I get very much from NEC, NEC as, as that's how they want to work yes. so actually yeah. it does feel like a very good a very good partnership there yeah so I think the NEC I think that very much is that you know I guess the NEC that, that's why you've got that effectively family of contracts that effectively you've got to look at you know it, it's true I guess because you saw I mean, I'm just amazed how many different to buyers you have. Mm. I think is this like fifteen hundred buyers uh, potentially? 15, actually, 2,600 yeah. suppliers. So yeah. um, you know, and everybody, I guess, all these different organizations all have slightly different ideas yes. on how they would like to do things, yes, how exactly. they would like to buy it, exactly. how they'd like to procure it. Yeah. But at least I think I guess you've got a you know, you've got then a consistency of having mm. a family of contracts. Yeah. That you know you can meet that, needs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, previous iterations of or the previous iteration of this particular agreement and 99.9% .9 of the other Crown Commercial Service frameworks have a two to three hundred page T's and C's that you yeah. sort of take bits out, add bits in, whatever, however you want to do it. Whereas using an external um, form of contract yeah. means that there's there's some consistency and more support as well. And streamlined it a bit. Yeah. It's better to make the process more user friendly yes, for everybody. Yes, it is. It is, and that's yeah. very much the purpose of some training today. Is yeah. that for those suppliers who haven't yet used NEC three? Hopefully, this is a step mm. to help and to take some of the scaliness out of using something new. Yes. Uh, and it's it's brilliant, and we needed um, to have um, a suite of contracts that or family of contracts that covered every eventuality um, because as we all know um, as, a, as the category manager and suppliers on, on the call here yeah. um, it's huge everything from traffic um, signals through to uh, through to parking through to sustainable transport um, etc etc all of that is available on the catalogue via supply short contract as well yes. so there's no end of different ways of buying different things yeah from different organizations <laughs> so no it's yeah. a good job that we've got a wide yeah. variety there so yeah so you've got yeah so come here so lot, lot 15 really is about the fact that you've got you know effectively you can yeah, buy any on I, 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 I don't know how many cpv codes there are locked on there there seems to be hundreds there's, of them there's every, a lot every possible there code, is a lot um to have that in there so again you know i think there is 
There is, um, I think you do, however, have a, cu a couple of slight little rules, don't you, yes. I think, in terms of which contracts can be used. Yes. So, um, talked about the professional service contract, obviously. Yeah. That's mandated to be used for Lot 12. You're right. Um, I, don't really, I don't see that being used in any other lot, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and Lot 15, as I mentioned earlier, is mandated to, to be the supply short contract. Right. Um, with the other, the other contracts being used across the lots, Short or long, um, again, it goes back to what's what the best thing for the customer and yeah. the suppliers yeah, right. are. Okay. Right. So again, yeah, so you've got uh, a lot of yeah, a lot of a lot of freedom there to go across in terms of which uh, which contracts you uh, you can use. Um, so uh, you know, so just going back to you know the NEC uh, contract. So again, I suppose just uh, now putting. The contract, the NEC contracts that you've chosen into some context. Yeah, sure. So we've got the, we've just talked about, we've got the we've got an NEC framework contract, mm. you've actually got your framework agreement, so yeah. saying that sets out all of the, I guess, the standard terms, conditions, Indeed. so yeah. you don't have to repeat all of that. I mean, that's the great thing about a framework is then if you put it, put things into the framework yeah. about how you're going to have further competition or direct mm -hmm. award, etc., mm -hmm. and obviously you then don't need to have to put all of that detail into. The contract no, that exactly. you select, that's already so, done, isn't yeah. it? so you can have some um, streamlining of that. So you can have the generic kind of, um, I suppose, obligations, responsibilities. Yeah. yeah. But then in the particular contracts, mm -hmm. you can have, have the specific information that you need yeah. to enable that, that thing to be bought, yeah. purchased as part of that contract. Definitely. Yeah. So again, that's that. Um, so. Um, so I think you selected eight of the eight of the contracts. So we've got the supply contracts. Mm -hmm. uh, so the supply contracts really that's about buying, you know, a piece of equipment or goods. Uh, and I suppose in terms of this, you know, having the, it could be that uh, you've got a supplier who's designing yeah. uh, equipment, etc. Mm -hmm. So it would it cover it would cover the, the goods and the related services, which could cover a design. Yeah. And it's about delivery dates, etc. So again, you know. The, the greater level of sophistication in the management process is there, or it could be simply having a short supply contract, mm. which again, you know, you just want to buy a bit like you said, it's a bit of your marketplace, isn't it? Effectively, yeah. you just want to buy another, you know, another lighting column. Yeah, somebody uh, to to install it. A little yeah. bit of uh, post uh, post installation, like maintenance, perhaps yeah. stuff that can be. Yeah. It's quite clear for a customer to, to make yeah. a decision. I want to buy that done. Thank yeah, you and again, what you've taken the decision is to, to I guess, mandate it such that go into the marketplace, go into your catalogue, yeah. it's straightforward. Yeah, bang. You know, each time we know what we're going to. Yeah, we've got a set kind of set format sure. of information. Yeah. So very much to so. require, as you say, that additional information, whether you want extended warranties or yeah. start dates, end dates for things, yeah, etc. That you yeah. put into. Um, to that. So again, it's actually been very, um, what's the word, I'm trying to think of the word now, um, you haven't mandated a lot, have you, effectively? No, so it's there's quite a lot of freedom there for the buyers. Yeah, very, yeah, there's a lot of freedom yeah. um, for, for the buyers and suppliers to talk to one another and to, to get the end result. Um, so we've got the supply contract. So you know, if uh, for goods and uh, for goods, basically, we've got the professional services contract. So again, um, if um, the uh, buyers want to come to somebody and make the professional services contract. Maybe you've got somebody who's going to provide a design service. Mm -hmm. That maybe they're going to design something for you. Maybe a traffic management system, or uh, you know, I don't know, traffic light system, whatever it might be, or doing traffic studies. I suppose things like yeah. that could do yeah. to work out what should be done, what could yeah. be constructed, what do you need to do. Mm -hmm. um, so that again, the PSC professional service contract would have all that. You know, great emphasis on effectively design. And also in terms of keeping a yeah. program as well, or yeah. even more sophisticated. But again, if you just want to, you know, effectively hire a person or a service, mm -hmm. somebody to come in and supplement your team, mm -hmm. you just need, you know, somebody to be act as a assistant project manager, low value, low risk in what he's doing. He's just coming as part of your team. He's not actually providing a service. Yeah, I think that might be the difference between. Mm -hmm. The two in terms of professional service contract, you've got an organisation who is fully responsible. I'm providing you a service, Danielle. If I don't yeah. do it, then obviously I've got some risks and liabilities. Yeah. Yeah. Right, if I don't do that. Example of the professional services contract um, mm. in in use is Department for Transport going out to tender for um, national traffic census data. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah quite a, a term specific. 
right. the contract, and so that's where it would, that's where that that will fit in. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, then we've got the we'll say if you're gonna if you want to create an asset, you want to construct something, you want to install something. And again, this is where we've got the uh, NEC3 engineering construction contract. So uh, effectively, there again with the more sophisticated management uh, mechanisms within the contract and the processes. And you know, again, this idea, but you know, the ECC has this idea that we could have it be a fixed price contract at one end. Mm -hmm. In the middle ground, we could have a target contract at the other extreme, it could be fully cost reimbursable. So there's flexibility in the main options you choose to go with each of the main contracts. And then, again, as always, we've got the short contracts. And again, this is something that a lot of us uh, NEC consultants talk about, is we, don't, we don't actually feel that maybe the short contracts are used as much as they should be, okay. or could be, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. That um, sometimes, you know, there can be, if you use a, you know, um, an ECC contract where you could use a short contract, there's a lot more burden Mm. in terms of suppliers having to provide information yes. and doing the management processes. Yeah. Whereas if it's low risk, simple, yeah. why not use the, the, the short contract? Keep it simple. Yeah, keep possible. it simple. And again, as, by example, with an ECC contract, you know, Section 3 has de absolute detailed requirements about the programme that you need to do. Mm. Go to the short contract, two lines that basically says the programme has what been whatever is. you've asked for. Right, okay. Yeah. 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 So, you know, whatever you've asked for. So that's the contrast between the two management levels, really. Sure. Um, and I think, as we said before, you know, I don't think it necessarily goes, some organisations uh, mandate, you know, say, we know, anything less than 100,000, you use a short form, mm. and everything above you use ECC. Mm. I think you said before, you know, so I've been on projects like uh, vehicular tunnel projects. Yeah. Referred from a road vehicular tunnels. And, you know, you have something small, maybe 50, 60, 70,000 pounds to do the fire alarms. Yeah, you might want an ECC because you know, you've got a whole series of packages, you've got lots of interfaces, the program becomes important. Yes. You need that. So yeah. I think you know, NEC doesn't say there's a value. No. You just need to look at the complexity and yeah, the risks. risks of it. And that should steer you to whether you need to have a contract that has all the sophisticated management techniques yeah. in or something where you can just, you know, you can have something simple. More streamlined. More streamlined. Yeah, yeah that's a nice word. I like where it's mm -hmm. to say. Uh, and then we've got the term services contract. Mm -hmm. So the term services contract essentially is about maintaining something, maintaining an asset over a period of time. Yeah. Okay. So again, I suppose a classic on the on the kind of road side of things, traffic side of things would be like street lighting. You know, you've got a yeah. you've got a, a company that comes in and maintains a street lighting for four years, five years, which is whatever period you've got yeah. in terms of their um, framework. We've also got the speed enforcement and AM, AMPR cameras. Yeah. Um, that need that type of service as well. Yeah. So, so yeah, they need to do, so they will pick up any, you know, kind of routine maintenance and things sure. that they need to do for all those things to make yeah. sure those, and no doubt there's KPIs on them for making sure that, that yeah. all the cameras are available and working, all those type of things that might be in the, in the contract. And as you said, with the term services contract, you do have the facility to add in through a task order effectively a small pass to work. So if you wanted to add a few more cameras in, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit of work, yeah. but they are, it's very much subservient to something. Yeah. And again, if you do that, the task order gives you, you know, a start date, completion date, you have a little program yeah. for it, may have delayed damages with it, depending okay. on what you want to put with it. Like a little bolt on. Yeah, it's like a little bolt, it's, like, it's yeah. like a little mini project in itself, yeah. really, okay. um, to go with that within the term services contract, if you want to do that. And again, with the uh, term services short contract, again, Simple, straightforward, something, you know, very simple thing that you might want to do, yeah. low risk, you know, just have a very simple contract okay. that you can utilize. Uh, and again, by the way, as an example here, so again, I think we were discussing earlier what maybe yeah, some not example, set in stone. <laughs> <laughs> but just some ideas about what things could be fall into those categories. And again, I suppose the key thing is, you know, from um, when the buyers are looking at this, is, you know, is it complex, is it simple? Mm. If it's complex, we're looking then at with the full ECC contracts and the management techniques. Uh, if it's simple, then we're looking at the short mm. contracts. Yeah. And that's simply what we're saying. So if we look at the supply of goods, we talked about street lighting, didn't we? Yeah. Effectively, that they're providing or supplying all the street lights for mm. a network, perhaps maybe there's hundreds of them. Yeah. Compared to the short, um, the short, uh, short, short right. supply yeah. contracts, where effectively you might just want one or two. Yeah. Or yeah. ten or something like that. But the thing you say on the catalogue, you kind of ban them. That you to like, you know, you can either buy one one unit or you yeah. can buy between one and 
it's a bit like going down the DIY store. <laughs> so if you buy, <laughs> if you buy, tiles, buy more, you get a bit of bulk yeah, discount. Exactly, yes, exactly. Exactly. So yeah. no, no, you spot on. The um, the suppliers do have the ability to add price breaks um, in yeah. for customers to see. So um, yeah, so yeah. that's very. I mean, just out of interest on that in the catalogue, are the suppliers allowed? Are they, can they update these prices all the time? Is it something they've got free yeah, to go on? Yeah, whenever so they want dynamic, to? Um, oh, right. um, yeah, so it's dynamic. right. In that sense, so they can add stuff, take stuff down, amend the prices. Yeah. Um, have different price lists, so say they've got two with various yeah. things on, mm. pop that one up, let's change our strategy, pop that one up instead. Yeah. So no, they, they can they can do that as and when they like. Yeah. And so, you know, if if a buyer if I was a buyer see something on there alike, mm. want to buy ten, you know, street lighting columns. Yeah. Then I would use the short supply contract. Yes. So that's um, attached to the marketplace or the suppliers put in the, the yeah. hard work to provide that. That's available for them. So the customer has everything they need to, to make an informed decision. Yeah. Uh, and then click buy and we're done. Um, as, as we said earlier as well, um, I encourage this collaborative um, piece. So yeah. where customers speak to me and they're like, well, I've seen this, but I want X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Tweak it a little bit. I will always, always, always encourage them to speak with the supplier. Right. Because yep. I understand that as a supplier, you can't put every different type no. of no. Um, good uh, service, all, everything that might come with it. Yes. Um, whereas if you get the heads up that somebody might be interested, then actually let's make it available for that customer and mm -hmm. others to purchase. Yeah. So that's that's why it's good. Good to talk. Uh, yeah, exactly. Very much so. Good to talk. Yeah. That's that used to be a BTM, but yeah, it's yeah, show it me now. <laughs> <laughs> I know that one. Do you know that one? Oh, no, yeah, don't know. Yeah, I said, well, yeah, I said, I've got to Yeah. Um, so, and there's professional services contracts. So, again, if you know, I think that mainly relates to lot 12, I think, isn't it? I think that's right. Yeah. So, if you want some, you know, want a designer to take on the design or something, then that's where you go to that. And again, the same thing. Short, short version of that as well. Yeah. Um, if it's something very simple, so it may be that you just employ, you know, might be employing a designer, but maybe he's working as part of your team. He hasn't really, he's not providing a service. He's just, mm. you know, just a, you know, almost a body. He hasn't got massive responsibility yeah. to a risk type of thing. As I say the work. So again, I think a topical at the moment. I was, was on the news earlier the other day about these electrical yeah. vehicle charge points. I saw there's some kind of quite a big, a big number going with that, that in terms well, of doing all of those. Um, DFT slash OLEV have uh, recently awarded some grant monies to, to cities that have bid for it for taxi electric vehicle oh, infrastructure right. yeah. um, mm. for residential and sort of car park um, yeah. infrastructure that's already that's already in place um, and as well of course with clean air zone targets um, due to hit by 2020 actually electrical vehicle vehicle charging points forms very much part of, yeah. of that strategy. So so yes, it's um, one of my most talked about <laughs> lots at the moment is lot 10. Interest. Yes, very yeah. much. Um, and again, we talked about that, you know, if there's again on the short contract with just, you know, minor repairs to vehicle charging points and things like that. Mm. And then the term service contract. So if you want somebody, you know, a supplier to maintain some asset that you've got yeah. uh, on your, you know, the traffic systems, etc. And you do that, and again, you know, maybe a short uh, term service contract if it's just something very simple that you need to, yeah. to replace, etc. So again, this is just very much an example because I guess there's there's maybe there's, well, I guess it's I was going to say hundreds, there's probably thousands of examples <laughs> exactly, that you've got on your communications and your framework it, agreement. It gives a it gives a, a feel, yeah. doesn't it? It does. Yeah. So I think that's where we are with that. So what we have with with NEC. Again, obviously, you can see already we've got you know we've got we've got a pretty broad spectrum of things mm -hmm. there. So there is there is some further help and support. So there are guidance notes and flowcharts. So every all of the the processes in NEC, every clause we have in effectively flowcharts. So they're really useful to look at in terms of running, you know, operating the contract, making sure we're doing the right things. Mm -hmm. And also, there's an NEC procurement contract strategies guide as well that you can have a look at. And I believe, I think, I think the suppliers can get hold of these. Yeah. Nice, so um, um, if the suppliers go onto the traffic management technology two web page, go on the little access button at the at, at the bottom of the page. Yeah. Um, there's details how to get a copy of a, a view only copy of the contracts so yeah. that does include the guidance notes and flow charts right. as well which is great um, and then um, discount codes as well for purchasing <clears throat> the contracts yeah. should they wish to proceed down that route so yeah. that's quite a handy little tip yeah okay
Um, so uh, moving on, if we look at the, the, the kind of NEC options, well, again, so, you know, um, buyers will be looking at or, you know, should be looking at what is it they wish to, which they wish, what do they wish to procure? Mm -hmm. So supply of goods, so supply contract or the short uh, version, professional services, the professional services contract or the short, yeah. uh, works again, engineering construction contract or the short contract services over a period of time, the term services contract or the short term services mm -hmm. contract. So again, that's obviously one decision that the buyers yeah. need to make in terms of doing that. Mm -hmm. Complexity, so that's another big decision, you know, is it simple or complex? Uh, does it require sophisticated management processes or not? Yeah. Is it low risk? So these are questions that effectively the buyers will be asking themselves when they're putting the contract data and the contracts uh, together. Mm -hmm. And again, if we look at it in very simple, we can see, you know, effectively this idea that the more complex projects, effectively where you've got more stakeholders, more interfaces, more risk, yeah. that's leading you to use, you know, effectively the, the full contracts yeah. rather than using the short contracts. So the yeah. short contracts will be a lot lighter on things like design or program requirements or the other management techniques. So yeah. when you need that, then that's where you then need to, you know, that's the key differentiation between the contracts that they are being um, selected to, to be managed under the contract. Mm -hmm. uh, main options, so here, um, what we've done on this slide actually is just as an example, chosen the engineering construction contract, really to, to give, uh, you know, a spectrum of the range of options. So effectively what we have is a contract where we have nine core clauses, yeah. which are consistent, what we then need to do, we need to choose a main option clause. This is for the main contracts. So if we take the ECC as an example, because that's got the biggest range, we can see we've got an option A contract fixed on some price. Yep. So as a supplier, you need to get fixed on some price. Mm -hmm. Option B is a remeasurement type of contract, quantity times amount of work done effectively. Yep. Option C is a target C and D are target contracts. Okay. And again, with option C and D, effectively maybe there's some shared risks or a bit of a challenge with your project. Mm. So effectively you start with the target cost, the tender total for prices. If the, the contract actually pays defined cost, if it brings it below the target, yeah. you share the saving in proportion, say 50-50. Yeah. If there's an excess, yeah. then the excess is shared between the parties as well. So again, I suppose that middle ground, option C and D, mm. tends to encourage people to talk to each other, collaborate, yeah. uh, try and get uh, the best outcomes we can. And then option E, as we say, option E really is um, you know, fully cost reimbursable contract. Mm. And option F is a management style of contract. So you're paying a contract to manage, and then you'll have a whole series of subcontracts sort of below. So yeah. there's a, you can see that, that flexibility that we've got under NEC. If we look at it, effectively look at the contract's incentive and risk, mm -hmm. and the client's risk and flexibility, obviously at one end we've got option E, mm. fully cost reimbursable. We've got a target cost contract which sits in the mini. The, the reason we've got a bit of a loss, which is because depending on the, the pain gain share percentage you choose, it can either be a fixed price or it can be fully cost reimbursable. Yeah. And then we've got a remeasurement type contract. And the other end, mm -hmm. we've got effectively a lump sum contract. Again, again, you can see the spectrum of where the risk sits between the parties and yeah. the selection of the option choices that the buyer may, may take. Um, so this slide is a bit busy, so I apologise for this, but again, it's really just highlighting that you can see that, I think, as an example on your framework, you've got the eight contracts, yeah. they all have a commonality of having the core clauses, mm -hmm. there are various main options that you can select, yeah. if you've got an X, that some of the X's you'll see that there are no, well, for the short contracts there are no yeah. um, main options to be selected. Mm -hmm. So again, it's just keeping the simplicity. And you also see there's no secondary options, mm -hmm. whereas when you use the full-blown contracts, the supply contract, the PSC, the ECC, the TSC, we can see that we've got a bit of a pick and mix of what we call secondary options yeah. to build up your contract conditions. Mm -hmm. And if we look at that, so we've got dispute resolution as well. So dispute resolution, um, W1 or W2, I suspect on yours, you know, the Housing uh, Grants Construction Regeneration Act 96 applies to construction projects in the UK, um, whereas W1 tends to be for international projects, so for projects okay. not described as a construction project. Yeah. So W2 would tend to be the yeah. one that would be selected in that instance. And then we've got a whole list of secondary options, so depending on how you wish to um, allocate the risk between the parties, so you've got yeah. very clear risk allocation mm -hmm. in NEC contracts. Um, there's no secondary options, as I say, with the yeah, short contracts. Sure. But if we look at that, so we can see on here, 
But again, the buyers are free to select yeah. um, which ones they want. So if they want price adjustment for inflation, they can select that or changes in the law. Yeah. Um, we've got a bit of a, so, so some people describe as a bit of a pick and mix, really. Yes. Um, so we can see on here flexible conditions, further list of items on here as well, mm. secondary options that are available. And you can see highlighting the, the main yeah. uh, contract. These are, these are all really important because what the um, customers should mm. be doing and what they are asked them to do is to enclose a draft copy of whichever contract yeah. they choose when mm. they go out to tender. Yeah. So if there are X clauses included, for example, I would suggest that supplier so it takes them on board, obviously, but actually understands what is made yeah, by right, them because that, yeah. that can have an impact. Yeah. And do you on mandate any of the secondary options or are the, are the buyers completely free to, no, to select No, the buyers any? Can, can select uh, yeah. the ones they want. Um, when it comes to, and I'm sort of jumping, jumping the gun a little bit, when it comes to Z clauses, there's a suite of Z clauses oh, right. um, that they can select, which again are available on the TMT2 webpage. Yes. Um, Bearing in mind how NEC is structured, I don't really see too much need for Z clauses because a lot of it's covered yeah. in either the, the long or the shortened version of the contracts. But should there be an instance yeah. whereby they need to be included, um, as I say, there's, there's a suite of them yeah. on my website. So there's a lot of choice here again for the buyers well, the secondary options yeah. that we can select. So you can see in here, um, you know, effectively the different ones that can be selected on there. X15 limitation of li contract liability for, for yeah. his design to reasonable skin care, obviously yeah. very important for uh, suppliers in that in instance, whether yeah. it's retention, key performance indicators, yes. I guess, may yeah. be used in certain instances as well. Mm -hmm. um, our YUK2 clauses that we have, uh, and as you said, you just mentioned the additional. Yeah. So again, I think the trick isn't it with the Z clauses is to use them sparingly, yes. if possible. Uh, you know, as any say, we like to think that contracts are well designed. So yeah. it is about additional. Yeah, do you really if you want, them? <laughs> yeah, if you want something additional. Yeah. Uh, and we said because of the way the nature of your framework, if it's all about technology and technology mm. changes, the pace of technology changes quite quick. Mm. Um, that you know, obviously, there might be things that come up in the future yeah. where there is a particular clause that you want to deal yeah. with something. Sure. Um, relevant to the particular service or goods that you wish to uh, that you, you wish to procure. Um, so putting it all together, if we look at it in very, you know, very simple, broad brush, simple terms, effectively we have a standard set of core clauses yeah. in the contract. Yeah. We need to select the main option clause mm -hmm. if you're going to use the full contracts. You need to select whether the dispute resolution yeah. that you're going to go, W1 or W2, mm -hmm. and then also you select the secondary options, but you're pretty free to select any mix of those. Yeah. There are one or two exceptions which are actually highlighted in the contracts itself. So okay. I think I think you mentioned before kind of the idea that X12 and X20 the idea is partnering X12 and X20 KPIs is something that you don't normally choose together. Yeah, you are one or the other. Yeah. So you need just to need to look at that. And there's one, there's a couple of other examples as well. I think maybe delay damage and stuff. But yeah. that's again the, the the buyers are putting that together anyway. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, what I would say to the suppliers is you know make sure you do check the contract data. You know, check if there's anything missing, flag it up during, yeah. during the, the whole process mm -hmm. um, because there's certain information you need to provide. Just make sure that it is consistent with the contract. There's no ambiguities or errors yeah. in that. Yeah. Better to pick it up during the tendering process. Yeah. Um, you know, because sometimes, I guess, sure. you know, I think that's the likely. If you've got a lot of choice, mm -hmm. then obviously sometimes that people can forget. Yeah. To select yeah, <laughs> certain right, things, so it's best idea. to query. If I was a supplier, I yeah, think it's a good idea yeah, to, good to query and question those those things as you put it all together. Um, so again, you know, um, obviously there's a there's a broad selection of um, choice in the NEC contracts under mm -hmm. the, the framework agreement. But not to worry, there's, there's help at hand, isn't there, Daniel? Very much a, a partnership between CCS and NEC for um, CCS or Crown Commercial Service help and advice. There's a slide um, here some useful bits and pieces. Um, I would advise if you don't already follow Crown Commercial Service on LinkedIn um, and or Twitter because there's a lot of updates um, for tenders coming up that might be of interest to you, yeah. training opportunities, webinars such as this. This has been publish published on both Twitter and LinkedIn. There's a lot of good stuff that doesn't take ages to read. So um, yeah, if you haven't already um, Liked for want of a better expression, um, Crown Commercial Service on LinkedIn and Twitter. Please feel free to do so. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, and yeah, so as mentioned with with NEC, um, there is a lot of you know there's a lot of information yeah. available on the NEC yeah. website. You know, there's uh, lots of contracts and books, training, user groups, advice, support. Yeah. Uh, there's a helpline as well. So yeah. if there are things that you want to um, to Don't flag up, yeah. and I think there's you know actually um, I suppose picking up there's there's a specific helpline that yeah. NEC and CCS have agreed, haven't they? Effectively, yeah, again, if you've got a problem or an issue, you can actually phone up and just yeah, get some support talk that through. Advice. Again, those details are on the web page if you ever need it. We've got a name point of contact, um, a chap called Darren Sains. Um, so by all means, drop him a line or um, give him a call or whatever. But yeah, it's very much a working yeah. partnership. So the support, you're not on your own, and the support's very much there. Yeah, and I think there's also, I think there's, there's a slide ring, I think, at the end, which gives you some information as well on a telephone number as well to call yes. you yeah, So a... th th there's plenty of stuff out there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get advice and, and support in terms of using uh, the NEC, um, NEC contracts. Okay. Um, so really, that, that's really what we're trying to do today, was just to give you really a quick overview of the, uh, the NEC3 family of contracts, also uh, give you an insight into how that's been used with the CCS mm. uh, traffic management technology to uh, framework mm -hmm. in the in the future. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I don't think anybody's got any uh, queries or questions they would like to uh, to raise with us at all. Um, I think there's a couple of things we talked about earlier, wasn't there, in terms of mm. uh, maybe kind of common queries and stuff that might. That yeah, might so uh, so a lot of the common queries that were have been to date around how to. Um, how to get a copy of the contract and how to, in terms of how do I see it and how do I purchase it. Yeah. Um, as alluded to before, go onto the Traffic Management Technology 2 webpage, click on Access, and there's a whole step-by-step um, -step instructions on how to do that. Um, another of the common questions is um, if I want to chat to somebody about an NEC3 contract, have some guidance around what it includes, what do I do? Um, again, in this in this um, slide pack that will be shared or on the NEC website, yeah. there's a telephone number. My experience, all very good, yeah. um, very helpful, and um, yeah, reiterate the point. No one's on their own with this. Yeah, I mean, if I mean, for suppliers in particular, is there a, is there a kind of you know is there a particular helpline or feedback? I mean, you're looking for feedback, etc., from them in terms of experiences. Um, all feedback is welcome yeah. uh, from from both suppliers and customers. Um, I, I want to know, um, so use me as the, the main point of contact. And if yeah. it does need to be directed either to NEC or to a line manager or whatever it might be, I will do that. Um, but all feedback is good feedback. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, so, yeah, is there any other kind of points you'd like to flag up at all, Daniel? Any, um, any kind of key messages you'd like to get across to the, the suppliers? I guess I guess the overarching message is collaboration, um, yeah. and that's not just a CCS or NEC thing. I've um, been to many events recently, whether it be public sector shows, in, um, industry events, etc. This C word of collaborations very much yeah. um, comes up, and just encourage that, encourage communication. Yeah. And as I just said, all feedback is good feedback. So. Let us know what you thought of this session. Um, let us know what you think of how things are working with customers at the moment, what can be improved, what works, yeah. and let's keep talking. Yeah. So, yeah, phone Danielle. That's my message. <laughs> Give Danielle a call now and find out. Right, so, now, yeah, no, so, but no, there's a, genuine, there's a genuine desire there there's to try and make, make, the, yeah, to make, to make things run more smoothly, <laughs> to try and do it. So, if there are things that you uh, I suppose in any C's parlance, we'd call it give, give you know Danielle an early warning if there's yeah. issues where maybe the quality of the contract data or the way you think you know if yeah, how things are done could it be more streamlined yeah. you know all of that would be yeah, anything that can you know improve the efficiency of the way that you deliver the project so yeah, I think that's um, that's good so yeah I'd encourage you all to give Danielle a call. Thank you very The phone exchange will be busy. <laughs> so um, yeah, so very good. So. Um, um, I don't think we've got any further questions at the moment. So, um, just a couple of uh, other slides, really. So, obviously, as we say, there's uh, you've got the uh, opportunity. So, some many maybe many of you as suppliers will actually already be members of the NEC users group uh, already, and you know. So, there's obviously 
sources of opportunity to, to discuss things or concerns or issues, etc. Uh, obviously, directly with CCS in terms mm -hmm. of give Danielle a call, and also in terms of NEC as well. That say so set up a relationship um, between C, uh, CCS and NEC. Mm -hmm. Daryl Sands is the guy here at, at NEC. So if you've got queries or questions about NEC or you feel you need further training or anything like that, yeah. then please okay. give you know, please give Daryl a um, call. Um, to discuss anything like that that you might need. So um, I think I think that brings us to uh, so. the end. Have We've got no further questions. questions. So uh, let these good people get on with yes. their day. <laughs> so yeah, thanks. Thank you very much for joining us today. We hope you found you. it useful and uh, very. No, well, I certainly wish you very good luck with your uh, your framework. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Cheers.